Well, let's speak to the leader of the Scottish Conservatives, Douglas Ross, who joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gary. Are you happy with the clarity the Scottish Government has now provided? Well, I think the fact that it came out so late last night after the promise that it would be issued at the weekend just shows how much this has been changing, how much confusion there's been. David's report said there was a, a great deal of confusion. Uh, and the fact is, on Friday, students were told, watching the daily briefing, that this information would be available over the weekend. Well, uh, yesterday was the weekend, so the information well, came out. Are you satisfied with it? Well, what I was just going to say, Gary, is it came out so late, and there is still confusion, because on one hand, students are being told they can't go home then they're being told they can go home if there are certain circumstances and I think there's still questions over what those circumstances are and, and the fact I make the point about it coming out so late the Scottish Government's press release even said uh, and remember you're, you're not allowed to, to visit bars and pubs this weekend there was only a few hours left that they could have visited bars um, uh, and pubs at the weekend because the guidance came out so late and again it's changed almost every day and that's why there were um, uh, people in David's report that said they were uh, disturbed about what had been happening. We've got to remember these are people as young as 17 we're dealing with. Their mental health uh, has to be a priority. And I think the fact there's been so much confusion and misunderstanding, it has not helped these young people at what should be an exciting time for them. But are you satisfied now that these rules provide some level of clarity? They're being told that they can return home if they feel they need to. Students are self-isolating can return home if, uh, if they require support, but the household that they're returning to is asked to self-isolate along with them. Uh, well, there is clarity in that way, but I still don't think we've got clarity from the Scottish Government about mass testing. The Scottish Conservatives have been calling for more widespread testing to get on top of this, particularly in university campuses. Um, we've really got to get on top of what does it mean uh, if a young person does go back to their home for uh, the reasons laid out in the government guidance, will they still have to pay for accommodation? We've been saying as Scottish Conservatives that anyone that decides to return home uh, can be refunded the cost of their accommodation. Well, Glasgow Modern University was offering that. Do you think that other institutions should follow suit? Uh, absolutely, because I was just going to say, Gary, I went to Agricultural College and SRUC contacted me yesterday to say they've now introduced a, a pay-as-you-go scheme so their students will only be charged as they need it. And I think that's really good from SRUC. They've also said they'll only go to a Mac maximum occupancy of 20% to ensure anyone staying in halls feels safe because uh, you know, everyone will be spaced out. So there has been some really good work done by colleges and universities. But again, we needed this guidance from the Scottish Government. I said last week, this is something that should not have come as a surprise. We saw in the United States of America, when students went back to university and college, there was a spike in cases on campus. And I really think this guidance should have been absolutely crystal clear before these young people left home, and certainly before they got to university and were, in many cases, it locked up in halls of horror. I was getting... You know, calls and of course, and we've seen exactly, but well, we've seen exactly the Sorry, same thing happening in England, that. of course. And you describe yeah. what is happening in Scotland as a shambles. I presume you would say the same of the situation in England. Well, let's see what happens in England. Obviously, there's a case. Uh, well, what do you mean? Let's see. Wait and see. We already know what's happening. Students in, in Manchester in Ma at the Metropolitan University said they were being prevented by from leaving by security guards and police. They were told if they leave, they can't come back. If it's a shambles in Scotland, and the same situation pertains in England, you must describe that as a shambles too, surely. I just said that, Gary, and if, if you look at what's happening in Manchester, what we've got to wait and see is what happens across uh, the rest of the universities and colleges in England. But I hope, uh, beyond anything else, that the UK government look at what has happened in Scotland and get the guidance out there before all the colleges and universities go back. And that guidance is crystal clear. So provide the same clarity the that the Scottish government has provided. Well, the Scottish Government have provided that clarity four days later, uh, having changed their decisions every day up until then. But we and haven't had that clarity yeah, from the UK we, Government. Do they need we, to follow suit? Well, they need to ensure everything's in place before all the colleges and universities go back. But I do want to make the point, Gary, you know, I have had people contacting me over the weekend saying they feel, as your reporter said, eh, like they're in prison, like they're in halls of horror, that they couldn't get food in. They've been told to do their washing in the kitchen sink. These are young people who should be at the most exciting point in their life that are at 
absolutely at the last, um, you know, they just either want to go home, they want to uh, get the guidance, they want to enjoy their time at university, and this has been taken away from them by the lack of guidance and the lack of clarity that's been offered. I don't know if you heard in the news at seven o'clock, we're reporting a letter from Aberdeen University saying students are reminded of the guidelines, warned that students caught breaching them will face what they're calling robust action, fines of up to £250, as well as the potential for suspension or expulsion. Is that proportionate? Well, I think what we've seen with uh, University Scotland in their guidance last night, they changed the uh, or clarified their own wording to back down to say, you know, they weren't issuing uh, bans and orders such as that. I think, you know, the vast majority of students will follow the guidance, but it has to be clear. And that's been the issue. If there has been any uh, lack of uh, compliance... Well, with there's the guidance, clarity there from because... Aberdeen University, the potential for well, suspension or expulsion or £250 fine. I'm just wondering whether you think that's proportionate. Well, I think now uh, that the guidance has been clarified and, as I say, it's taken far too long, the days it's taken for that to happen, uh, I hope the students follow that uh, to help us get on top of this virus. Just but a final the point. Has, sorry, sorry, the problem, Gary, has always been throughout this, students didn't know what guidance to, to follow because there wasn't anything. It was changing on a daily basis from the Scottish Government and they were absolutely let down on that. Just a final point on a separate issue. We heard over the weekend contingency plans are being laid in case next year's Holyrood elections can't mm. go ahead. We know, of course, that you want to be part of those elections with the potential of sitting in the Scottish Parliament afterwards. How do you feel about that? Well, I've seen those reports. I haven't seen anything uh, more substantial other than the press reports. And absolutely, the focus of the Scottish Conservatives continues to be uh, on our campaign to be elected to Holyrood uh, next May. So our focus will... Do we need a continue. contingency in case the, the elections can't go ahead? Well, I, I think all parties will uh, have discussions about that going forward. It's right that in the times of a global pandemic, every option is being looked at, but um, there has been nothing at the moment that stops me continuing my efforts to come up with the policies and the team to take the Scottish Conservatives forward in the election next May. Douglas Ross, leader of the Scottish Conservatives, thank you very much. We'll speak to the Further Education Minister, Richard Lockhead. He'll join us after eight. Well, Richard Lockhead is the Further Education Minister and joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. So what is your new advice? Well, this is a very challenging time for Scotland students. Uh, I think we all recognise that. And it remains our strong message that we encourage students to remain living in their current households, in their current student accommodation, because that's the, the best way forward to s prevent the spread of the virus throughout the country. And that's why we also have national restrictions in over uh, meeting other households indoors and social gatherings and so on and so forth. But we do recognise, of course, that, as I said, because it's such a challenging time at the moment for many students, particularly, you know, first years who have gone to university for the first time and they're away from home for the first time, perhaps, that we have to explain and clarify what the national guidance means for student households. And that's why we worked really hard over the last few days to publish this guidance showing that there are circumstances where students can go home. So what are those circumstances? Well, under the law that applies to everyone in Scotland, there are some exceptions, of course. And what we've done is put those exceptions into a student household context and explain what they are. So firstly, you know, if you have a reasonable excuse in Scotland under the current law uh, for going to another household, uh, you know, for instance, if there's a family emergency or you've got well-being reasons for being there. So in the case of students, that would be if you're struggling, for instance, to self-isolate at university or you're struggling for any other reason, your mental health has been threatened because of the, the current situation, uh, then, of course, that's a defence for going home and visiting another household. And who decides if it's a reasonable excuse? Well, the law of the land, the regulations apply to students as to the same as the rest of us in the country. And you have the guidance, uh, you have the, the regulations. If you decide to take a decision, you have to be able to defend your decision uh, under the regulations. And what the guidance here, uh, here does is explain to students in their circumstances how to go about that. And we really urge all students in Scotland to familiarise themselves with this guidance. We've worked very closely with universities, with student bodies, on this guidance over the last few days, and they'll all be disseminating that across our campuses in Scotland. So, in essence, every student in halls in Scotland can say, I'm struggling and can go home? Well, you know, I've listened closely to what a lot of the students have been saying on social media uh, and in your own programmes uh, and, of course, in, in other, uh, through other channels. And I know many students are struggling at the moment, but I also know that many students uh, accept that they want to be at university. It is challenging at the moment, especially if they're self-isolating, but they are enjoying the opportunity of making new connections, of at least meeting their tutors now and again, albeit a lot of their learnings online. 
So I don't expect, you know, a mass exodus from Scotland's campuses, but the opportunity is there for those who are struggling. Because, yes, we, we have advice that we want people to, to stay on campus and stay in their current households. But they but could all go home if they want to. They could all say, I have a reasonable excuse, I'm struggling, and they could all go home. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, tell, we'll tell how people interpret this, this guidance, but the guidance is very clear that our... our our advice to Scotland students' population, as I said before, is let's all play this role together. It's really important that we work collectively across the country and our students can play a key role in helping suppress the spread of this virus because we're dealing with uh, foreign education going back at a time of a global pandemic by remaining in their current student households. How many have gone home so far, do you think? Uh, we've had some reports. We don't have a total yet because universities are, are saying they're going to get back to us uh, hopefully uh, very shortly with what they, they think the situation is. But the, we, we've had some reports of some students, yes, going home, and it's really important that they were self-isolating uh, when they were in university, that they are self-isolating at home and their families should be self-isolating as well. And would that have been in breach of the guidelines given that you only updated them last night? Well, as I said, the, the national law is there and these guidelines explain what they are in the, in, in the, the context of student households. I, I'm not aware of people who are supposed to be self-isolating who have gone home, so I can't comment on whether people have breached the guidelines. What I do know is that some people, of course, will have gone home because we've had that feedback from some of the universities. But, you know, under the law at the moment, they are able to go home. What we've done here is clarify what that means in the student household context because of the current difficult situation that many students are facing. And if they go home, when can they return? Well, as the guidance makes clear, you know, that students on the one hand have the same rights as you know everyone else in society, which means they could, for instance, if they are really unhappy in their halls of residence, they can change their permanent household. But of course, that's a permanent move. That's effectively moving home. So if they were to resign their their lease at university and permanently move back home, which they're able to do, uh, then of course they can't move back and forth between households. So they'd be basically making their, their home their main residence, uh, and that's an option they have. The guidance also makes clear that so they could lose the money themselves... that they've paid in those circumstances. Well, we've said to universities we want them to be very sympathetic towards students who are struggling at university and do return home and change their, their main household to being back home. Uh, and we know that Glasgow University, for instance, have given four weeks rent-free to, to all students in halls of residence. So we said to all universities, you have to be really sympathetic to the circumstances uh, of students. And, of course, the Scottish Parliament passed legislation um, a few months back which gives students the right, if it's for COVID-related reasons, to resign their leases. And if they choose to stay at the moment, and you're urging them in the main to stay, if they choose to stay, can they go home for the October holiday? And what are the prospects for the Christmas holiday? Are they as well going home now in the knowledge that actually they may not be able to return uh, for those holidays to their family home? It's up to each student to take their own decision, to read the advice if they're unhappy in their halls of residence or at university being away from home. I urge them to read the advice and take a decision of what's best for their circumstances. But is there going to be a circuit breaker for the October holidays, for instance? In, in October, for two weeks, is the country going to close down? In those circumstances, if you were a student, you might be minded to just go home now. Well, we're not under lockdown just now, but we have advice and we have some restrictions in place. And, you know, it's going forward, we don't know where the pandemic's going to be, of course, and, you know, our absolute priority at the moment has to be to suppress the virus. But are you planning the circuit break for the October holidays? Are they going to be stuck in halls with, with nothing to do because the country is going into some kind of lockdown? The advice is that we are asking students to remain within their households and on their campus accommodation. But, of course, this guidance explains that if they need to go home, how they have to abide by the regulations. I understand that, but I'm asking you, are you considering closing the country down for two weeks during the October holidays? Are they likely to be stuck in the halls at that point? That's, that's not our plan just now, no. We don't have a, a national lockdown, but we do have restrictions in place, and we're asking our students to play their role by sticking to their current student household on their campuses. I think it's you know it's an obvious message, and we're all trying to really do our best here to act collectively to, to suppress the virus, and having masses of students moving about the country on a regular basis it won't help that. But it's really important that any student that is struggling is aware that they can go home. Professor Mark Woolhouse from Edinburgh University, epidemiologist, said that computer modelling on students returning to universities was undertaken by government advisors, which said that campus outbreaks of COVID-19 were entirely predictable. At what stage did you see that advice? 
Well, we had lots of conversations, received lots of advice from our advisors over the summer as we worked on the route map for the safe return of colleges. But that specific computer modelling on students returning to universities, saying that this outbreak was entirely predictable, at what stage did you see that? Yeah, I, I don't know what he's referring to, so I, I'd have to see exactly what he's referring to to understand how to answer that question, because I've not seen it. But the, the question, in terms of answering your question, is we had the guidance that there is, of course, a risk, as it is right across the whole society and economy, for restarting after after lockdown. So we had a, a route map to look at the safe return of colleges and universities, and that's why we issued guidance to, for instance, universities about how to operate student residencies safely, about how to have face-to-face -face teaching safely, and that was all put in place, and that is all being, you know, uh, adhere to at the moment. At what stage were you given advice on the need for wider testing around student campuses? So the advice we were given, and I know there's a variety of opinions out there, but the advice we were given was that we have to focus our testing capacity on symptomatic testing. So if any student has symptoms, we have to make sure the infrastructure is in place to ensure they get their tests. So you weren't and given course, advice on the need for wider testing on student campuses? The advice we got was that is always an option, but we should focus on symptomatic testing. That was the advice we received. And also, importantly, as I heard Willie Rennie's point of international students, was that the best way to keep uh, uh, campuses safe and uh, Scotland safe was for international students to quarantine for 14 days coming from certain countries. And I've had no feedback from any universities or the health authorities with any issues over international students. Uh, the, uh, the outbreaks we've seen you know, will be largely down to socialisation and the, the situation with international students is they have been quarantining for 14 days. Are you comfortable with Aberdeen University writing to students, reminding them of the guidelines, but also saying if they breach them, they'll face robust action, fines of up to £250 and the potential for suspension or expulsion? Well... I think it's really important we don't stigmatise students or, or pick in students. They've got a very, very difficult situation here. They're young people. They're often going away from home for the first time. They have to socialise to make connections with other people. But we're urging them, of course, to do that within the rules and the regulations. But are you so comfortable about anybody facing so the threat of suspension or expulsion because so the they haven't followed the rules? So the universities, of course, have their own disciplinary rules, and we've said to universities we expect those to be used as a last resort. But, of course, it's always been the case that universities have disciplinary options available to them for the behaviour of students on campus, and they have to have that up their sleeves because we can't afford uh, the continuation of big parties on campus and so on and so forth, given the threat that has to the health of students and the rest of the population. So, you know, universities have to have those tools up their sleeves, but we're saying to them, please use them as a last resort. We are all in this together. Our students can't be blamed for these outbreaks. It's just a very, very difficult situation. We have a global pandemic when we're trying to allow people to go on to the next stage of their lives. We're grateful for your time this morning. Richard Lockhead is the Further Education Minister. Thank mm -hmm. you.